Hi, my name is Olivia Lanes, and I'm the North American Team Lead for Education and Kiskit here at IBM Quantum. And through my job, I have a lot of interactions with students from all over the world. And the number one question that students never fail to ask me is, Olivia, if I want to get a job in quantum computing, what should I major in? And like most questions that exist in the world, I don't have a simple answer to that. But you can get a hint of what you might want to do for your major based on what career most appeals to you in the future. So for instance, I was a physics major in college and then I went on to get my PhD in physics as well. And physics appealed to me because I always liked working with my hands. I was one of those people that learned by doing things and building things. And I wasn't that interested in coding. I wasn't that interested in being a software person. And I knew I wanted to be in a lab working with devices and building things myself. So that's a pretty good clue that you might be good at physics, engineering, and those things might interest you. I knew in the future that I would want to work in a laboratory setting, in a big team, and getting to build devices. So that was a great clue for me that I should stick to more of the engineering and the physics side of things. If you view yourself as a person who's going to work more on software or back-end or front-end development, that's a clue for you that you might want to major in computer science. Other options include math, engineering, chemistry even, and based on what career you want in the future, that can inform what degree you should be pursuing at an undergraduate level. So I generally like to break down the jobs that exist in quantum computing into four distinct columns. And these columns can sort of be used to sort into different majors. So the first is quantum information theory. So theorists basically work with one or two other people, not necessarily always a big team, and they get into more of the heavy math and the quantum theory behind the devices. So things that fall under quantum computing theory might be simulation of physical systems, multi-qubit gates, um, optimal control theory, uh, quantum algorithms, and even error correction. And if you want to work in that domain, if any of those sort of careers appeal to you, you might want to major in physics. Nice. You're definitely going to have to have a strong physics background in order to understand quantum information theory, not surprisingly. The next column, which is the column that I sort of sorted myself into, is hardware or experimentalists. And these are the people that are working with the devices that are in the laboratory. Generally, they work on a bigger team. Uh, they interact with a lot of different people at the same time and they are interested in building things, packaging things, wiring things, actually working with the dilution refrigerator, which holds the quantum computing chip. And the different jobs that fall under this, this category of hardware would be um, engineering, microfabrication, packaging, um, thermal engineering, uh, working with FPGAs, circuit design, circuit layout, or microwave modeling as well. And I think if you're interested in any of these, uh, physics, again, would be a really good major, or engineering. Um, I work with a lot of electrical engineers, sometimes mechanical engineers. Uh, that is all a really, really good fit for these types of jobs as well. Next, I have the, the software category. So um, Qiskit is a software tool. If you're really, really interested in using Qiskit or working at the front end or the back end level, um, that might be this column scientific programming, um, if you're really interested in, in different software languages, if you're interested in cloud services, APIs, the user experience, um, algorithms, or data structures. These are all clues that you might want to major in computer science. Now this is not what I, what I did, but I understand that computer scientists basically take a path that doesn't have too much physics necessarily, but you can always choose to take a physics class that interests you, that might be beneficial for your career outside of your major. Nothing prevents you from doing that. And then the last column, um, which is sort of the miscellaneous category, would be applications. So applications in quantum computing and quantum information science um, basically fall into the category that I would probably more accurately label as exploration, because we don't necessarily know what all of the applications of quantum computing are going to be. Algorithms, um, hybrid quantum classical optimization, quantum simulators, uh, finance, chemistry, these are all possible future applications that people are working in right now. And I think applications uh, is a really challenging thing to pursue because you sort of have to be a jack of all trades. 
in order to be really successful in these types of careers. You need to know the physics, you might need to know a lot of math, computer science for sure, because a lot of what you're gonna be doing is programming, working with simulators or real devices on the cloud, and you need to know how to interact with those efficiently. And then depending on the application that you're pursuing, maybe it's finance, maybe it's chemistry, you're gonna need a background in that as well. So this is definitely the most open-ended category. You can major in physics, chemistry, computer science, math, uh, many different um, majors would enable you to work in the applications field, I would say. So these, these four pillars are generally what I like to break things down into. And of course, the decision is really yours. Uh, I can't tell you what the best major is. Nobody can. You really have to be comfortable pursuing this degree for at least four years, but possibly even longer than that if you choose to go to graduate school, and then working in it after you graduate as well. Um, I think sometimes when people ask me, you know, Olivia, what is the best major to get to work in quantum computing? They want to know what jobs have the most availability. And that's also not an easy question to answer, unfortunately. Um, there are some jobs that are open for right now for applications, um, software developers. There are a lot of jobs in engineering, but these trends are going to vary over time as the technology progresses. So I think the best advice that I can give anyone in this position is, you know, you really have to follow what you're passionate about. I mean, it's cliche, but it's true. Nothing is promised to you when you graduate. Nobody says, you know, you get this degree, you read this book, you get this job. That doesn't happen, unfortunately. So you're gonna want to be able to rely on your degree, even if you necessarily, don't necessarily end up working in quantum computing to be able to get a job that still fulfills you. So that would be my advice. Um, sorry, there's no easy button. There's no shortcut answer, like everything in life. But I think you can really, you know, dig deep and figure out what appeals to you the most and figure out the answer yourself.